Welcome to Financial Issues, where we join reality with truth, helping you make the most of your money by honoring God with your investments. Now listen in as we give you the practical tools and advice you need to become a biblically responsible investor. Good morning. Welcome to Financial Issues. We're so glad that you tuned in today. We're happy to have you and we're excited that you want to learn how to honor God with the resources that you have and that you've tuned into Financial Issues to learn how to be a biblically responsible investor and just make really good stewardship decisions. We hope that you'll find out more about our ministry at financialissues.org. Today's stewardship verse of the day comes from Isaiah 45, 7. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I'm the Lord who does all these things. So this was God's message to Cyrus the Great of Persia. You don't know me, but I know you. I will hold your hand. I will subdue nations before you. I will open doors that won't be shut. I will give you treasure and I will make you great. Why? Because Cyrus was a good man and he deserved it? (laughs) No. (laughs) Scripture (laughs) Scripture tells us that uh, in verse 4, for the sake of my, of, for the sake of Jacob, my servant and of Israel, my chosen, I have called you by your name. So Cyrus the Great is renowned for liberating the Jews from Babylonian captivity around 539 BC. He issued a decree allowing them to return to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. Cyrus provided financial and political support for the reconstruction and returned sacred vessels taken from the first temple. This just proves to us that God is in the know and in control. God didn't do anything for Cyrus because he was righteous. He did it because all the world and history revolves around the person of Jesus Christ. God chose the Jews to be his chosen people and to reveal the Messiah to the world. The temple needed to be rebuilt and in place because that's where the saving work of humanity was done when Jesus entered into human history. God will move mountains, crush armies, and cause societies to rise and fall to accomplish His purposes. As Christians, we can take comfort that God's will and His purposes will be played out whether or not America is on the right side or not. So we must always remember that we are first and foremost citizens of heaven who serve King Jesus now and in eternity. What do you think? Amen, Shanna. I love that. Yeah, we can take comfort that God's purposes will come to pass. You know, it's hard to say, no matter the outcome, blessed be the name of the Lord, but yeah. that's what we're called to do. Um, I can think back in my own life about times where it was easy to say that and times like in the spring of 2022, for example, when Dan passed away, when it was not mm-hmm. so easy to say right. that because I didn't really like the outcome. Uh, it's easier said than done, especially as you mentioned, when we consider the financial fate of our country. We love this country. We want it to thrive and we're standing on the edge of a knife, especially in terms of economics. But we need to be able to say, regardless, the Lord's purposes will come to pass and blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of all this, Shanna, this past week, we've kind of been in a little mini series here. We've been exploring kind of the two possibilities before us in the coming presidential election. And so kind of wrap all of this up. The big question for today is how do we prepare well for both options, understanding that they could be vastly different outcomes for our country? How do we plan well? Yeah. Well, I guess my my answer is going to be a little bit different than what most people may expect. I'm not going to tell you you need to, um, you know, buy gold or, yeah. you know, be in a certain stock or, you know, avoid a certain sector or, or, or any of that, you know, I'm going to tell you something more important. We need to pray. Mm-hmm. We need to pray for God to save America. No politician can do that. You know, we have to be careful. There's a lot of rhetoric out there about, uh, I mean, I hate it when they even use the word Messiah in, or Savior in uh, in political conversations. But, you know, for God to save America, it's going to re- it's going to involve the repentance of both unbelievers and of the church. Mm. So neither candidate has the answer for America unless they use their platform to start preaching the gospel. Neither candidate has put forth um, a super great plan to even really address government spending, which I yeah. think is the biggest problem. Um, really. 
Uh, we have to get it through our heads that God's people have lived throughout history in times of plenty and in times of lack. But God was all that his people ever needed, whether they were in plenty or lack. The Bible is full of stories about how God came through for his people time after time. You know, Jesus' disciples even had serious concerns after he died and rose and was about to go back to heaven, and they asked Jesus to tell them how to know that he was coming back and what to do, and I think that that advice from Jesus is really relevant even in this day and age. He said, stay vigilant and sober so that no one deceives you. That was the first part, and then he said, he told us to be about our Father's business. So... There could be different sectors or companies that would benefit more or less, whether certain people get elected or don't get elected. Um, But our strategy won't change drastically. You know, our main focus is going to be that we're going to honor the Lord, that we're going to stay out of companies that are using shareholder dollars to fund the darkness. Um, You know, we're still going to stay focused on the things that have worked in the past and that we have a relative, uh, a relatively high level of confidence that can continue to work into the future. So, you know, I I, I don't necessarily think that um, we're going to wake up the night after the election and things are either going to instantly become way better or instantly become way worse. I mean, there's There's more to just this election than just the presidential election. We still have a Congress. We still have balance of powers in Washington. So, you know, some of the things that some of the extreme things that we may be hearing on either side may not ever even become a reality. So, you know, we have to fight hard to keep the peace that Jesus gave us when he left to go back to heaven. Mm, Good stuff, Shanna. Speaking of that, having peace, how would you advise us as I think many of us have legit fears of economic collapse, particularly under a Harris administration? I think that's a point where these two potential options, Trump versus Harris, are very different here. And we have a lot of fears that if Harris is elected, we could collapse. How would you advise us? Well, I like to think that I'm not afraid of anything because the Bible tells us not to be afraid of, 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 uh, you know, anything so many, so many times over and over and not to be anxious, but I do have major concerns. I do, I do see, see things, um, getting better or getting worse, depending on, um, whose economic policies are running the country. And not only that, but whose moral philosophies are running the country. So, you know, I think that we should have far more fear for the coming judgment and the wrath of God for those who don't know and love God, not because they didn't have a chance, but because they rejected him. And, you know, we should fear that far more than we fear losing our earthly wealth. And we should trust God. We should, you know, go back. We should read our Bibles, turn off the news and open your Bible and read the stories about all of the dire situations that God's people have found themselves in the past and then read how God faithfully and lovingly provided for and delivered and saved their people. Mm, yeah, that's awesome. And then going to the other side of the aisle even also, how do we think logically about the economics of a Trump presidency? Look, we know his, at least what he has put forth looks a lot better than Harris's does just from simply what they've put forward. But he's also a flawed leader. He needs Christ just like she does. How should we think logically about a potential for a Trump presidency economically? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the the economy has a much much better chance of prosperity entering into prosperity under a, under Trump leadership than I do a Harris uh, leadership, but um, you know that's that outcome is is to be determined, and we don't really know exactly um, how it's going to pan out. You know, w- but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if America fell at this point. Yeah. We were once a nation who loved and honored God and pursued His ways. Today, we're a nation who is largely rejecting God in more and more ways every single day. God would be totally justified in giving us over to an administration who would put the final nails in the coffins of America. Um, Since we have very, not you and I individually, but as a country, we have turned our backs on God. We have murdered babies. We have um, we have said that what is wrong is right and what is right is wrong. We have persecuted people for their faith. And, yeah. you know, that is just, uh, it, God would be totally justified in turning his back on us. Yeah. But you know what? Every time God's people suffered, 
they either repented and were blessed or they persisted in unrighteousness unrighteousness and were destroyed. So we still have a choice in all of this. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff, Shannon. You know, it reminds me as you were talking about the things we need to repent for. I saw earlier this week, a, uh, a Hindu demon God statue, some 90 feet tall was raised. And I think it was the state of Texas, actually just yeah. a reminder of God's grace. We desperately need it on our country because we are openly, uh, worshiping idols now. So, yeah. uh, you're absolutely right. And when God's people suffer, they either repent or, uh, they were destroyed and we need to repent. Yep. We've got a better chance of repenting if we, if we suffer some consequences Amen. here. And yep. that's the eternal, uh, that's the thing of eter- more eternal value that we would actually repent rather than be comfortable here on the air. Yep. All right, folks, we got to take a break, but we'll be back with more financial issues after this. If you don't get life right, you're not gonna get all the other issues correct, period. It is the issue that impacts every other issue. Life is the central part of what keeps this republic together. It is the contract that the founding fathers passed down through multiple generations. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You don't have life, you don't have a republic. There is a temptation out there right now. And I want to just tell you we must resist it. There's this temptation that we cast this issue aside. How does that honor God? It doesn't. And if it wasn't for preborn, I would be super just confused and depressed because there has never been, in my opinion, a more disjointed time in the pro-life movement. We need a machine to go up against the Planned Parenthood beast. Like we have to play offense against the pro-abortion forces in this country, okay? We have to play offense. And Freeborn does it in this compassionate, merciful, godly way that is just so inspiring and amazing. There are moments in life that define us. Choices determine the courses we take. Choices that create life. Or those that save a life. And some make life worthwhile. There are decisions to stay or to go. To remain the same or to grow. Sometimes we pray and make peace. Other times we take a stand for what we believe. In celebration, mourning, triumph, and defeat, we are invested in every decision we seek. Despite differences, we have one thing in common, the desire to do all for the glory of God. Keep your wallet aligned with your heart and your investments in harmony with your faith. Timothy Plan, biblically responsible mutual funds, ETFs, and retirement plans. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at timothyplan.com. Read carefully before investing. Thanks for joining us on Financial Issues here, folks. Good conversation we're having here, trying to make some sense of the two outcomes that we have before us in the 2024 election. Shanna, final question for you here. Are there any practical investment steps that we can take right now, specifically, you know, investment steps that will allow us to be in a good situation no matter who wins this November? Obviously, we trust the Lord. We do what we can. Things happen outside of our control. But how would you advise us for this? Well, I guess people would expect me at this point to say, you know, um, buy gold yeah. or buy this particular stock or overweight in this particular sector, mm-hmm. but I'm not. <laughs> um, I, I guess the the short answer would be become a become a partner because that yeah. the way that we communicate with our partners what we think is best is you know by what we have in the asset allocation models and what we what we have on on the buy list mm-hmm. and so um, you know consider becoming a partner today. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Awesome. No, yeah, I love that. That's good stuff. Speaking of the partnership, Shanna, I know that we have a uh, petition for a company right now, though it's not just for partners. Uh, mm-hmm. It's for all of our listeners here. Yeah. So uh, the company, we asked our partners to sell on Monday because it is no longer biblically responsible. So on our website, financialissues.org, there is a petition that you can sign. And if you want to know what the company is that we're suggesting our partners sell, um, you can find out by going to financialissues.org. And since you're going to be there, just go ahead and sign the petition anyway. (laughs) So this is one of the ways that we can um, push back against darkness. You know, the reason that this ministry 
exist is to help people honor God in the way that they invest and avoid companies that are that are funding the darkness. So when a company that we have recommended in the past becomes no longer biblically responsible, we ask our partners to sell it. So you don't have to be a partner. You don't even have to own the company to do it. But if you believe that biblically responsible investing is important and you want to encourage companies just to operate in excellence and do what they do and stay out of the culture war, go sign the petition because, um, you know, there's been some success in this, in this area lately, you know, tractor supply was a company that started, um, you know, their, their CEO was very woke and that was starting to show up in a lot of their policies. And, um, they got a lot of pushback from their customers and from their shareholders. And they said, you know what, you guys are right. We're just going to, we're going to refocus on our business and we're going to stop supporting gay pride parades and festivals. And you know what? It was very well received. Um, Shortly after that, John Deere followed suit with them. But now, you know, we've got a company that is, uh, you know, seeming to buck buck that trend. And so... Go give them a piece of your mind. Just sign our petition. <laughs> it'll, it'll, uh, it won't cost you much at all. You'll still have, you'll still have plenty of faculties left. But, um, you know, go sign our petition and you can join us in, in asking that company to, to change their mind. Absolutely. And you could forward the link to your friends and family. Um, you know, tell them, you know, hey, um, I, I watch this program or I'm, I'm part of this, uh, I'm a partner of this ministry that is, uh, really that is a Christian ministry and is really trying to um, clean up corporate America again. And because that's, that's one of the keys to cleaning up the country. You know, if this stuff, if this garbage isn't funded anymore, then it ceases to exist. So forward the link to your friends and family. That would be a great way to introduce them to the topic of biblically responsible investing and maybe um, encourage them to start watching the program or um, becoming a partner too. Mm, that's awesome, Shanna. You know, let's switch gears here for just a moment. I saw a headline, real troubling stuff as we're discussing the next possible administration for the next four years. Uh, something to consider here. Tim Waltz, the um, potential vice president, it's, uh, Kamala Harris's vice president pick, gave almost $1,000, $100,000, excuse me, in COVID funds to abortion doulas. I didn't even know those were the things, Shanna, but apparently they are. Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz. They were. Yeah, they, they, I thought they were to help people deliver yeah, right, live babies. Right. It seems like the opposite, actually, of yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. But Governor Waltz gave nearly $100,000 in pandemic relief funds to a pro abortion nonprofit. Um, now, now, so this this uh, nonprofit is called the Spiral Collective. It's a reproductive justice nonprofit. It describes itself that way as a queer, trans, disabled, BIPOC-led organization committed to the values of reproductive justice and decolonial practices. That's shorthand for uh, basically a liberal machine that murders babies and trans as children. Uh, Wisconsin State Senator Jim Abler, a Republican, said Walsh should have, quote, prioritized our seniors who were dying in droves and nursing homes during the pandemic instead of advancing a political agenda. Any thoughts on this, Shannon? Well, I think it's despicable. You know, there's there's a lot of things that, uh, that he's done, you know, putting tampons in boys' bathrooms yeah. and you know, that that's just some of the mild offenses. It's, you know, um, he was really harsh on his, on the, the citizens of his state with the COVID lockdown, you yeah. know, sending um, National Guard into the streets, yelling at people to get inside their houses that were just, yeah. you know, sitting on their front porches. So, you know, it's despite all of the cackling and joy and, you know, all of the things that are... Um, that are happening within the campaign. Don't be distracted by that. It's, you know, I just, I think there's a, a very dark agenda behind it. So, um, the good news is that although they're funding darkness, you can fund the light. So we, um, here at financial issues, we encourage people to be joyful and generous givers. That is a huge part of stewardship. It's not the only part of stewardship, but you know, the thing that people think about when they hear the word stewardship are, are dollars and cents and, and giving. So, you know, the left and the dark side is very committed to giving to the causes that are anti-Christ. So we as Christians should be very committed to deploying our dollars um, to fund organizations who are funding the light. 
who are promoting the light. And one of those organizations is Preborn Ministries. They've been a longtime friend of this ministry, and we have supported their ministry. We've helped them raise a lot of money. We've helped them um, put uh, ultrasound machines in clinics across the country. Every time that you give to them, every dollar goes towards a twofold effort, helping mothers choose life um, from funding ultrasound machines to discipling uh, discipleship materials to mothers and to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the most important thing that we could do with with any resource that we have, whether it's our time, treasure, or talent, is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Preborn uh, is doing that in the clinics as they um, get the opportunity to come before a woman in one of the uh, when they're in one of their most desperate states, when they're when they find themselves in a crisis pregnancy, and they really need to hear a life saving word, and that's what preborn does, and you can support them. Uh, just go to our website and click on the preborn banner, or you can dial pound two fifty and say the word, keyword baby. Mm. Awesome, Shanna. Yep, fun the light with preborn. That's good. So, some questions here, Shanna, before the end of this segment. John is 67, and he's wondering concerning the most recent sell recommendation. Does this mean we should sell out of all the stocks recommended? He only holds MA40 and MA63. Uh, he sold all of his positions in MA40, but was underweight in the materials sector, and MA63 is a very large chunk of his income producing positions. He says, That said, I'm currently rolling all my dividends from all stocks back into my money market as I do not require the use of them right now. What advice would you have for John? Yeah, so um, MA63, the one that you still own, is technically clean, but they have a very, they're they're drifting more and more um, towards the ESG, DEI focus, and um, I suspect that it's just going to be a matter of time before they they fully fail the screens for uh, biblically responsible investing and you have to sell it anyway. But, you know, if you, you know, if you have reasons that you like it, that's the great part about the do-it-yourself strategy is we give you recommendations and you get to decide whether or not you implement them. What I will say, though, is that there are things on the buy list. Um, we didn't take everything off the buy list. We, um, even for the last couple of weeks, we still have preferreds on there. And I would suggest that those preferreds um, may be good options for replacing the income. This week, we have added a few things back to the buy list. And I think if you take a gander, you'll probably be able to find something that you'll be able to uh, replace the income with. Awesome. Next one is Gail Shannon. Not a partner, but a tough situation for Gail, unfortunately. She said, my husband recently divorced me after 28 years of marriage. I'm 65 years old. I have a 401k investment through my former employer who has it with Fidelity. Now, I took my lump sum pension option. I've invested it with a local firm that's tied to a specific financial institution that Gail mentions. My concerns with the volatile market is prompting thoughts of taking it out of the 401k or the other pension investment and putting it in a CD and perhaps trying to manage my own investment through your tools here. Do you have any advice for me? It's a good question. Yeah, I think you're I think you're on the right track, Gail. Um, so most 401ks, most employer sponsored retirement plans get to pick the investment options for you. They don't, you know, um, micromanage your account, but they limit the menu of investments that you can choose from. And unfortunately, many of them are not biblically responsible because they're they're mutual funds typically and they're not screened. And so, um, you know, our program does that. We, we give you a blueprint. We give you asset allocation models and a buy list and uh, lots of videos on the, on the website to help you um, do this on your own. But the first step I would say would be whether you are going to use a financial advisor or do it yourself is, you know, that you want to open an IRA and enroll both the lump sum pension, if that is a pre-tax pension, and you have the option to do it, roll that into the IRA along with your 401k. And then, yes, you will be able to to purchase some CDs if that is uh, the route that you decide to go there. I would say that if you're only looking at CDs, you probably don't need um, to pay an advisor because there's nothing really there to manage. Um, you know, if you want to have a diversified portfolio, which I think you should strongly consider, um, then you have to decide, are you going to use uh, a financial professional or go it uh, go it alone? What I would say is that you can kind of try it out without, you know, 
without really having any skin in the game. Become a partner. Um, use the tracker. You don't actually have to make the investments. You can um, walk through and you can see how it would would be if you were building your own portfolio there. So you can put things on the tracker, you can build a portfolio there, and you can kind of track it and watch it and see what questions you come up against and see if you think it's going to be something that you can do. Um, If not, if you're going to use an advisor, I would strongly recommend that you talk to them about biblically responsible investing. Ask them to explain what their investment philosophy is. Um, It's not the same as just being a Christian. There's a certain strategy. There's certain things that that you need to be able to implement and certain things that you need to be able to avoid. So I would, I would go in depth on that and find out their thoughts. Awesome. All right. Are we at the end of the program? Just about at the end of this segment here. Yeah. In this segment. Yep. All right, folks. So we, we do have more financial issues to come. If you listen to a short version of the show, you'll want to go to financialissues.org or get our free phone app so that you can get every episode for free. For the rest of you listening on the website or other places, stay tuned. We're going to be back with more financial issues. Through the ministry of Preborn, the Financial Issues family has saved tens of thousands of lives of babies. What an amazing job that God has done through you, the Financial Issues family. Would you join us in saving the lives of babies? What an amazing reunion we will have in glory, meeting all the people that we have saved. Please go to preborn.org, that is preborn.org, or financialissues.org and click on the Preborn banner. Samuel Case, news anchor with FISM News, sits down to read real comments from real viewers. All righty, let's see a bigger one here from Spectrum Nomad. That's a fancy name. Finally, a non-biased news source that tells everything how it is without having to push their opinion. You know, it's not necessarily true. We're not biased. We are Christian. We are conservative. But you're totally right that we don't try to uh, push our own opinions or commentary in the story. So it's really great to hear that you're picking up on that. Are you new to biblically responsible investing? As Christians, we have the responsibility to be good stewards of the money God has entrusted us with. As we invest in the market, we want to make sure that the companies we invest in aren't taking money and using it to fund industries that grieve the heart of God, like pornography, abortion, gambling, or the LGBT agenda. That doesn't mean a company must be a Christian company to be biblically responsible. It means that company is solely focused on excellence in its industry and doesn't support things that God hates. To learn more about biblically responsible investing and how you can put it to practice in your portfolio, go to financialissues.org. The mission of Financial Issues is to expose Jesus for all he is, all he means, and all that he can do. In the last 10 to 15 years being in ministry, being married, something that has been constant in our lives is Samaritan Ministries. As we've moved, we've had babies, we've had different things come up, we have just been able to rely on Samaritan in ways that we never really even thought about before becoming members. Our heart's desire is to plant roots and be in a place for a really long time. It's how we were raised, we see the benefits of that, but we also see the open-handedness of being used by the Lord wherever He calls because we just assumed when we started pursuing church planting, the quickest way to get from point A to point B is a straight line. And with the Lord, sometimes you find out it looks a lot more like this. And yet, Samaritan was with us through the entire Mm -hmm. entire thing. We didn't have to look into, oh, we have to change insurances now because we've moved states or whatever the case may be. And it's just been a real blessing to us in different phases of life. I'm Kyle. I'm Colleen. We're the Genix. And we're Samaritan members. Securities offered through GA Reppel and Company, a registered broker, dealer, and investment advisor, member FINRA and SIPC. Opinions expressed by Shanna are hers alone and are for informational purposes only and do not necessarily represent those of GA Reppel or the outlet on which you are listening. You should consider how the information applies to your situation prior to personally implementing it and consult any financial professional you work with to make sure it's applicable to your financial plan. Good to be back with you all. Once again, folks, we're live today. 
610-363-1110. Number to call in, 610-363-1110. Hey, I got a wonderful treat for you all, a special guest of the program, dear friend of mine. You know him and love him. Craig Halgard, our financial issues ag reporter, is back live with me. Craig, welcome back, buddy. It's great to have you. Seth, it is an absolute pleasure to be here with you this yes, morning. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining, brother. Hey, uh, Craig, before we get started into the meat and potatoes, what we're talking about, give us an update on your health, man. I would love to hear how you're doing. I, I know we've heard some great news from you recently. So what can you tell us about your recovery? Yeah, things have, have really come around. And, um, you know, I had, had those surgeries, and then my bladder just really wasn't wasn't waking up and doing bladder-like activities. And so, uh, boy, the, the last couple of weeks, it's just kicked into gear. Um, yeah. You know, it's it just, uh, I had a conversation with my doctor yesterday, and, and uh, she was very surprised by what's what's been going on. So I, I'm i convinced that just God has, has touched me and, and answered prayers and, and brought healing. And um, But, what, yeah, what a change a, a few weeks can make. Yeah. It's, uh it's pretty awesome. So we're down to uh, one more surgery in December to kind of wrap this up. But, um, yeah, it, things are, are going extremely well. And I really am grateful for the prayers of, of the staff there and, and the listeners as well. So it's it's made a huge difference, I believe. Awesome, brother. Yeah, we're continuing to pray for you, man. That is great news. And, when, folks, when, when Craig shared this with me, I, Craig, I think we talked on Monday, I believe it was. Right. Uh, it, it yeah. was I was just so thrilled to, to be able to hear that because you know it had been a tough road for you brother so we're just so thrilled for you man and we're gonna keep on praying for you man it's great stuff i, I appreciate it yeah yes, it has, has not been the summer of my dreams yeah. but uh <laughs> god is good sure. we're on the upswing so well, i'm sure and i know I, I know it's tough for you too man being such an avid outdoorsman and someone who loves running and things like that i'm sure it's been tough for you but hopefully getting on the road to recovery you'll be able to get you outside some more as well yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely. good stuff. So, Craig, I'm going to pull the curtain back for our listeners a little bit on one of our favorite inside jokes. So, Craig and I have an inside joke, folks, here that we just love. Oftentimes, when we talk about on and off the air, we talk about the folly of our governing overlords and the ruling elites who try to control every aspect of our lives and make us eat bugs, for example, and what they spend the tax dollars on. Oftentimes, Craig, we come to the topic, very high-level stuff here. This is like doctoral level stuff of cow flatulence cow gas <laughs> so Absolutely. we say it you know we say it tug and cheek craig but it kind of pains me to say that it's true that some of our tax dollars and it's happening in other countries as well uh, some of it are being spent on the ridiculous topic of studying the effects of cow gas cow flatulence on global warming and things like that and there are laws in place craig that actually do capture cow flatulence in an effort to fight the climate crisis what can you tell us well, about this crazy I, I think, crazy I, thing I think you're that I had sent you that picture a while back when they, they were putting gas masks on cows yeah. and then they had tanks strapped to them so they could capture any methane emissions that came out and, and measure it and, and then kind of see what how, how that was destroying planet Earth, so yeah. to speak. But yes, I mean, to your point, Denmark has taken us seriously to the point that there's, there's law out there now that it's going to be taxing cattle because of the methane gases that they emit. Um, and it's a sliding scale. It's starting out at $96 per head. And uh, by the year 2035, they're going to be up to a tax of $241 per head. Uh, and I would have thought that the Danish farmers would have been screaming about this. But as I <laughs> yeah. dug into it, th there's a, a group, in fact, it's a, the largest egg business uh, co-op in, in all of Europe. It's got 25,000 Danish farmers. And their CEO came out and said that, Really, this tax needs to be anchored in European Union legislation, um, and uh, it said neither the climate, or agriculture, nor nor other industries benefit from Denmark acting unilaterally. So, rather than pushing back against this absurdity, uh, he's he's saying, "Well, th that's right, but all of Europe needs to be taxing cow gas, right?" So, uh, we we need a, a European wide cow fart tax, I, I guess. It, uh, <laughs> And, and the sad thing is, if, if the EU does do that, uh, you know that there are people in the United States that are, are going to be looking at, it, at that as well. And, and, um, and, and I, I think you'll see this idea, unfortunately, spread. It's, it's in my mind, a ridiculous idea, but yeah. um, I'm afraid it's going to spread. Now, ultimately, I think what they're after is the destru destruction of animal agriculture. Yeah, yeah. So if, if you look at cattle prices in Kansas right now, if you're going by, by a, a feeder 
calf right now in Kansas. So you buy a 750-pound feeder calf and raise it up to market weight. It's to be around 1,400 pounds. Um, the, right now with the economics, there's actually a, a net loss. If you didn't have your costs locked in ahead of time, the average feedlot today would lose about $292 per head. And then in cattle, there's, I mean, there's just cycles like that. But when you take what the EU is proposing to do, you would take all the profit margin out, so there would never be a really a profitable cycle. And I, and I think it would would spell the end of of the, the of animal livestock, really. Yeah. And and I do believe that's the ultimate goal is to destroy uh, animal agriculture. Yeah. And Craig, why why do you think why do you think they're doing that? I mean, is it just because they're evil, or is it because they actually think that by destroying animal agriculture, they're somehow helping save the planet? What do you think is going on in their minds? Well, unfortunately, I think they actually believe it. I mean, I, I think that they truly believe that that uh, we can control the climate worldwide. And uh, you know, I, 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 you know, there's there's nothing dumber than a smart person. But yeah, I'm I'm, not, I'm stumbling on my words here. But you know, <laughs> I, I I think they're highly educated to the point of, of stupidity almost. Yeah. But oh yeah, but they believe, and I, I think they're they're so uh, egotistical and pompous mm. uh, that they believe they can can change the world. Now it's interesting. Uh, methane from livestock accounts for about 3.7 percent of all "quote unquote" human-driven greenhouse gas emissions. So of everything that that is kicked out, it's, it's credited to to the human being act or human activity. Only 3.7 percent of that is from livestock. So um, you know it wouldn't appear to be a huge. A huge impact, but it's an easy one. And I think you've got groups of, you know, we've got this group called the Ethical Eaters out there, for example. And, yeah. and you have the UN calling for uh, eating of, of less meat. Um, so I, I think there's a couple different factors. And I think the, the, the vegetarian group is using climate change as a way yeah. to to eliminate meat from diets, frankly. Mm, absolutely. So. It, it's it just it's crazy stuff, Craig. And folks, let me just give a quick plug here because, you know, we have as part of our partnership a great conference call that Dan did a couple years back on this great reset climate change. Really, really good stuff, Craig. I don't know if you had a chance to get to listen to this, but folks, it's worth the price of the partnership. If you're not a partner and you want to hear just some of what is, has kind of been going on behind the scenes for the last 40, 45 years or so, Dan did a great conference call right. on that. Craig, is this related? to that great reset stuff kind of the whole climate change agenda you know all that i i think it is yeah and you know what what's really i mean if you step back and think about it they're not being intellectually honest i don't believe right so if, if you go back to say 1600 right about the time the pilgrims were stepping foot on, on plymouth rock you know there, there's no way of knowing how many buffalo were roaming through the, you know the fruited plains so to speak but i've seen estimates up to 100 million buffalo uh, okay, so and buffalo are rumens just like cattle, okay? So they are also p producing methane gas. Today we've got 92 million cattle in the U.S. And, you know, there's a professor at the University of Wisconsin that's done the research and says that both uh, bison and cattle emit um, flatulence basically at, <laughs> at, at the same level, okay? Yeah. so. It's not like our cattle are farting more than buffalo used right. to fart, right? It, it, <laughs> right. It, it, it's, it's the same, and, and you look at those numbers, and, and they're comparable. Yeah. You've also got, I think, 35 million white-tailed deer, they estimate, in the United States. They're all rumens, and they're all producing flatulence as well. So truly, yeah. I guess if you want to be an extremely brilliant um, climatologist or environmentalist, <laughs> the best thing you can do is get a hunting license this fall and go shoot some deer because right. you're— you're saving the planet from, from their greenhouse <laughs> gases. So. But somehow I don't think that group would be on board with what I think is a brilliant Yeah, group. I think so. I'd have to agree with you. I just can't imagine seeing those folks going out and <laughs> enjoying some recreational hunting. hunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, cra Probably crazy not. stuff here. So, so Craig, what, what what kind of impact? And we're we're coming to the end here. We might have to make this quick. But what what kind of impact could this potentially have on U.S. farmers if this stuff were to jump the Atlantic and come on over here? Well, ultimately, if you get the kind of taxation that they're looking at in Denmark, it it would destroy animal agriculture. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it it would absolutely decimate it. Yeah. So I think. Um, 
Yeah, it, it, uh, it, and of course that would change what we because you, you look at the amount of corn that's required to raise cattle now and stuff to it. Right, it would have a trickle on effect. But the the first one to get hit would be uh, the cattle producers, um, and then you would see grain prices, corn prices um, collapse because you you just removed a huge segment of demand from the industry, and um, it, it would be decimating for agriculture. I think. Mm. God forbid it. Brother, we appreciate you so much. Uh, an enjoyable conversation on a rather strange topic, nonetheless. And hopefully uh, <laughs> we don't have to be worrying about this in the near future. But, Craig, we appreciate you, brother, as well as all of our farmers and ranchers out there. Know that you are loved and appreciated by us. We love the work that you do. Uh, we appreciate you all so much. Craig, I appreciate you, brother. We'll have you back on the show again sometime soon. Folks, we'll be right back after this break. Stick with us. where financial decisions can feel overwhelming. It's easy to lose sight of what truly matters. But what if there is a way to align your financial goals with your deepest values? And financial Issues has helped us navigate the complex world of finance through a biblical lens. By prioritizing and investing in a way that honors God, Financial Issues has empowered us to focus on what truly matters, our family, our faith, and our future. With financial issues by our side, we can invest knowing that our financial decisions are in line with our values. Take the first step today and become a financial issues partner to access rich online resources, training tools, and guidance for biblically responsible investing. Head over to financialissues.org and learn how to invest your money in a way that honors God. That's financialissues.org. How is Timothy Plan continuing to lead the fight as you guys now enter your fourth decade uh, of, of leading this fight of, of biblically responsible investing? We've been too silent for too long and we can no longer be silent. You stand up uh, like Ronald Reagan said, you know, we're only one generation away from losing all of our liberty. It has to be fought for. I wish it didn't. Uh, and you can fight for it. You don't need guns and ammunition on that. You can fight for it especially with your dollars, because it's always about the money. Mm. And when the money uh, starts impacting people, they start paying attention. Uh, you know, when we launched this, they said it couldn't be done, but yeah. here we are 30 years later. Uh, they said you couldn't get competitive returns, but here we are. What a tremendous testament of God's grace. Go to financialissues.org forward slash Timothy Plans to learn more about Timothy Plan. The opinions and recommendations expressed on this program do not necessarily represent the opinions of the station or any of the program sponsors. Additionally, all products or services offered by the program sponsors may not be known by the program. Hey, folks, I want to remind you there, as we were talking, Craig and I were, uh, all this stuff is related to this whole notion of the Great Reset, and you you really do. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, trying to just fill time here and telling you, you really need to check out Dan's conference call that he did on the Great Reset. you got to go listen to it. Uh, it's still up there on the partner side of the website under the conference call page. Now, if you're not a partner, that's one of the many good reasons to become one. Uh, also, to get access to our buy and broad list. we got some stocks back on the buy list. you got the asset allocation models. It's a great thing to do. So I'd encourage you to become a partner today if you're not one. Uh, and make sure as soon as you become a partner, go listen to Dan's conference call. It's about an hour long, really, really good stuff on this idea of the Great Reset. So go to the conference call page, scroll all the way down, and it's the the, the bottom page. It was from January of 2021. Actually, right when I joined the uh, staff was when Dan did this conference call. Really, really good. And it's well worth $132 a year just for that, along with everything else. So do that today. Uh, Financialissues.org, click become a partner today. And I hope you'll join us for Bible study as well tomorrow, folks. It is not for just partners. It's for everyone. Uh, so we'll be in 2 Timothy 2, verses 14 through 16 tomorrow. So I do hope that you will consider joining us for Bible study. Uh, just go to the resources tab and click join our Bible study, and that's where the call-in info and all that stuff is there. Uh, and consider inviting someone as well. All right, we've got some great wisdom to get here uh, from Dan Celia on uh, staying strong 
in the markets. Before we get to that, though, we did get a question that came in from Claude. He was asking this for Craig. Claude, I was talking to Craig during the break, and he was telling me the answer to your question. Are there any policies that uh, Trump may have that might help some farmers? And Craig was basically saying generally he definitely thinks that there could be, just with the idea of Trump seeming to be the candidate that's much more um, – it, you know, we'll keep government in check, basically, you know, as much more small government, uh, you know, uh, keeping the government regulations and restrictions in check. So from a general perspective, yes, Craig couldn't really come up with uh, couldn't really think of any specific policies. But certainly common sense tells us, you know, Trump seems like he would be the president that would be far friendlier to farmers and ranchers. So it's a good question there. All right, let's get to some wisdom here from Dan Celia on staying in the markets. This first one, great value in not losing. Dan would say this often, and I hope that you all can take this wisdom and apply it as we're in still a little bit of a volatile time. Be reminded of this great wisdom from Dan Celia. Here he is. Where will it be the best place for me to invest $42,000? I'm 60 and my husband is 70. I've been a um, prime it depends. for years. Wow, great. Thank you. Um, do you want to invest it? Are you going to need it anytime soon? Um, I don't think so. It doesn't look like it, it. When I say soon, I mean in the next five years. No. Okay. So my... Uh, I wouldn't invest it anywhere right now. Um, I would leave it where it is uh, if it's in in a savings account or something like that. You're not earning anything. But I wouldn't want to um, invest it right now. I'll say what I said uh, all through 2008, 9, and 10. There's great value in not losing. So if yeah. you're not in and you don't have that risk, you know, I would just hang in there where you are. And I think that it it looks as though uh, I'm, I'm going to say for an indefinite period of time, you will know by listening to me and doing a conference call or getting an alert or something like that when it's going to be time. But I I wouldn't say and I can't say now what I would want you to think about investing in. Uh, because I, I don't know what two or three months or six months, what things might look at. So whatever I say now is probably going to change. So I would just tell you to stay put. Uh, I wouldn't, I, I don't know that I would put it in a CD and necessarily tie it up for any length of time, but I would leave it where it is safe in a savings account, a money market account, that it can't it can't go down, and uh, we I need to I need to have uh, another few more weeks, couple you know maybe a month or so, uh, to continue to see if it's even possible uh, to sustain this kind of. Um, uh, thing that is going on right now in Washington or if they're getting these few initial things done and uh, they're going to pull back a little bit and move on to something different. I'm very concerned, obviously, and I would want you to just hang on to that for now. I also have an IRA and I would like to move it to um, Fidelity that has mutual funds where it is now with Merrill okay. Lynch. Where, where is it? Where is it now, Mer Yeah, so that's real easy to do. So what you would do is you would go to Fidelity. Or you can do it online. Go to Fidelity.com and open up an IRA account. You don't have to put any money into it. Just open the account up. They, with that, there will be a transfer form and they will transfer from your old IRA to this new one. It'll just happen. One day it'll just show up in your Fidelity account. Now, you can call them. There's an 800 number there when you go to the screen, and they'll walk you through the transfer. And um, But you don't have to do anything with Merle Lynch. You just have to open up the new Fidelity account. Great. Keep up the good work, please. Last year, I was up 34% just listening. Oh, wow. 
What a blessing. What the Lord tells us to do. Hmm. So you're a blessing. Boy, it's amazing what happens. Amazing what happens when we're in the obedience of God. Thank you for that so much, Deanna. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. What a blessing. Great to hear that call there from Dan Celia and that listener. One more clip here from Dan. We have a caller here who said they panicked. They got out. This was back in, I believe, 2020 and wondering now what to do. Actually, I think from 2021 as well. Here's some great wisdom from Dan Celia. 60 years old, prematurely pulled out 80% out of my C fund and my TSP. Uh, Should I gradually get back in? I panicked after the election, thought there was going to be a crash. Uh, Dollar will continue to decline, uh, and the value uh, of inflation is right. So uh, the stock market rally um, so uh, stock market rallied. Rally is the only place for my TSP retirement. Um, yeah, you sure did uh, premature. You know, I, I and I say this, I don't mean to say it to you, Petra, but that's why we're here, man. Listen to the program, become a partner, and find out what is going on so that you can track some of these things. You know, long before the election, um, when everybody was saying, we're panicked, I'm scared, I'm nervous, people calling in, I said, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to do anything. The market's not going to go down. And I, and I said it before the election, and you'll remember that. A lot of you will remember that. I said it. Now, a lot of you didn't believe it, and you did what Petra did, and you got out. But um, I was right about that, not because I'm smart. It was just um, too, too – uh, it would have been too illogical um, for the markets to go down. And the fundamentals, the underlying fundamentals, they took a long time to get there. And they were stronger than they've ever been in the history of the nation as far as I'm concerned. And you just don't wipe those away. Now, we have a pandemic. Who would have thought? But the fundamentals still held us up during that pandemic. So listen, pay attention. Um, you know, you you get – all the fear mongers are out there to design are designed to fear you, to scare you, to place that fear so that you do things that are irrational or don't make any sense. Would I get back in now? No. So you you now we're at all time record highs. Uh, we were after the election at a, or before the election at all time record highs. We've continued to hit more and more. Will we continue to hit all-time record highs? Yes. But look, you're 60 years old. If you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to time the market, if you can't say, "Well, I'm going to get back in," and I'm not getting out until I'm 68, I don't care what happens. Then get in. If you're going to be do the same thing, start listening to everybody and thinking and doing your own analytics. And all of a sudden, you're going to be getting out again when things drop, which they will in the next eight months, then I would tell you no. So it's on you. Uh, it's your decision. Do whatever you want to want to do. But if you're going to if you're 60 and you're retiring in five years and you're a nervous investor, then no, I would not stay in the G fund and get your, you know, uh, appreciate your two and a half, three percent you might be getting there. So much great wisdom there from Dan, folks, of course, about staying in the markets, about uh, what we saw in that first clip about the great value and not losing and also about doing what you're comfortable with doing as well. I think those are good questions to ask. Speaking of the markets, we haven't looked at them yet today. Yesterday, they all finished positive. They turned course after the down, the brief down day, it seems, uh, on Tuesday. Uh, So yesterday, the Dow finished about up a tenth of a percent. The S&P up about two fifths. The Nasdaq up over a half percent. Right now, the markets are all looking... Uh, basically positive. The Dow is right at the flat line, but the S&P is up a quarter percent and the NASDAQ is up a little more than three tenths of of a percent, more like a third of a percent. So that's what we're seeing in the markets this morning. Hey, folks, want to remind you, please sign that petition for Lowe's. We want to hold their feet to the fire. Lowe's has turned its back on its customers. And so we want to make sure that our voices are known. We have almost 500 signatures on this petition. You guys are doing a great job. The more numbers we get, the more people behind this, the greater of a message it's going to send and the more momentum we'll be seeing with this rally of biblically responsible investing. We'd love to see it. That's what we're here for. Folks, great to be here with you. It's all his. It's Be Found Good and faithful stewards. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing, for more financial issues. 
we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. Thank you for joining us. This has been an FISM production.